What's going on everyone, it is Axel Beats here for Anime Uproar, and as you know, anime has tons of assassins spread throughout it. But today, I'm focusing on the Zoldic family specifically. I still remember when I learned about Killua's family and how different and interesting they were, so I'm super excited to get into it. If you've been enjoying our Hunter x Hunter content and you want to see more, show some support by leaving a like and commenting on this video. It is the best way to let us know that you want to see more, and it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, remember to subscribe so you always see our content as soon as it comes out. Finally, you can also follow Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. And of course, this video might contain some Hunter x Hunter spoilers, so please proceed with caution. You have been warned. The Zoldics are considered to be the greatest family of assassin in the world of Hunter x Hunter, with each of them having unique and deadly skills, most of whom are immune to all poisons as well as resistant to pain and electricity, while also being strong enough to open the 16-ton door guarding their estate before they even learn Nen. Even as children, they are prolific, for example, Killua reaching the 200th floor of Heaven's Arena at the age of 8, or Kaluto joining the Phantom Troop at the age of 10. Each Zoldic begins training immediately from birth in general assassin techniques and martial arts. However, as they grow older, they can begin to focus on specific talents or fields. So, with the basics of the Zoldics out of the way, let's get into the individual members. As I think it makes the most sense, let's start out with Killua. Killua acts as a secondary protagonist for much of the series, and he is the third oldest child in his family. While he is the current heir to the Zoldic assassination business, and the family as a whole, Killua doesn't really want to fulfill that role. This is to the point that he even runs away from home to become a hunter, something which changes just about everything for him as he meets Gon during his hunter exams and gains a whole new perspective on life. Killua always had this really cool duality to him. He can go from this mischievous kid who's a little bit too honest and sometimes offensive, to someone who is deadly serious and brutal. Just in terms of psychology, Killua is incredibly interesting. He's this character who was tortured and abused growing up, but remains fairly optimistic in nearly every situation. There's only really one time that this optimism fades. He was brainwashed so that whenever he came across a stronger enemy, for example his brother Illumi, he would be forced to run. However, once Killua removes the pin which was implanted in his brain, he starts to overcome that fear very quickly. In general, Killua is a balance for Gon. When Gon is blindingly optimistic and hopeful, Killua acts as a way to bring some reality to the series. And when Gon has a descent into madness, Killua then acts as a voice of reason and hope. So, let's talk about Killua's abilities. As mentioned previous, he is immune to poison, he can deal with electricity and pain pretty easily, but his assassin training also leads him to be extremely fast and strong as well. In less tangible forms, this also helped lead him to having tremendous ability to size up other people, understanding how strong they are in relation to himself and others with just a glance. Something which Gon doesn't really have the ability to do at first. Before we get into his Nen, as an assassin, Killua also has access to other abilities as well. And of course this goes for most of the members of the Zoldic family. Silent Gates, which makes their steps silent, and Rhythm Echo, which creates afterimages of himself to disorient his opponents. Now on to his Nen. Killua is a transmuter type, with his bread and butter ability seeing him turning his Nen aura into electricity, essentially turning him into a human stun gun. At its peak, Killua can use this electricity to make him move automatically and react to his surroundings or counterattack. This ability is called Whirlwind. He could also use his electricity to boost his own running and jumping speed with Godspeed using the same principle. Now, these abilities are great, but they are limited by the amount of energy that they use and how low the amount of energy Killua has is. And finally, Killua's most powerful weapon is all the drip he has. My god, this guy changes clothes like every 10 episodes, and it's always great. Next up is the eldest Zoldic child with Illumi. He's probably the creepiest member of the family in my opinion, with a strange contrast in how he looks and how he talks. Despite having a nearly emotionless expression, he always talks in this kind of joyful and innocent way. However, that all changes when it comes to work, where he becomes absolutely ruthless. We've seen a kind of obsession and overprotectiveness towards Killua from Illumi, similar to the one that their mother has, but this is often shown in a very twisted way. For example, trying to keep him safe by implanting a pin in his brain that forces him to run away from strong opponents. 
While in general the Zoldix have a rule against killing each other, Illumi sees no qualms about using the other members as he actively wants to gain control of Aluka and her powers. All of Illumi's abilities, outside of the typical assassin set, revolve around needles, which is just great. By sticking them into his own face, he can manipulate how he looks, often disguising himself as a man named Gitteracker. He can also implant needles into other people for several different effects, including hypnotizing them, controlling their corpses, or even just giving them an order that must be completed. Illumi is honestly a pretty cool and unique character through all of anime, not just in Hunter x Hunter, even despite seeming so flat on the surface. His interesting abilities and contrasting personality traits just make him super memorable. Yes, super creepy, but still super memorable. Miluki might be the least interesting in the Zoldix, and that's probably because of his less than unique design and the fact that he isn't really a fighting kind of character. Miluki is a bit overweight. He's an otaku and like the stereotypical kind of otaku, you know, not the fun kind. He's selfish, quick to anger, and he's very much a coward. So, you know, lots of redeeming qualities. We really get our first taste of him during the Zoldic family arc, as with most of the members. However, when we get to meet Miluki, he is torturing and whipping his brother Killua, who is chained to the wall. Not a great introduction, I'm going to be honest. As I mentioned though, many of the Zoldics have their own specialty, and while Miluki isn't a fighter, he is kind of more of a behind-the-scenes guy, hacking, inventing, all that. He can often feel a little bit flat as a character, sort of relying on those stereotypes of the otaku and the hacker man vibes, and it's probably why he falls so short to me. Honestly, if any of you like this dude, let me know in the comments and tell me why, because I just don't see it. On the other hand, we have Aluka, who is both a jelly bean of adorableness and kind of a horrifying monster who just wants to be loved all at once. This might actually be one of my favorite characters in the series. She is super interesting to me. Alakut was possessed by a dark continent creature named Nanika, and together they share her body. We were always told about how soulless and uncontrollable she was, but then we actually meet her, and she's like the sweetest girl ever. Killua apparently brings out the best in her though, as he always treats her well, and it seems like he's the only one to do so, making a really interesting dynamic around her character. She is especially cool though because of Nanika, the creature inhabiting her. Nanika has this incredible Nen ability, which allows them to grant wishes with seemingly no limits on them. The only condition is that whoever the next person that Aluka requests things of has to complete three tasks, and if they can't, that new person and the one that they love most will be crushed to death. The bigger the previous wish, the more and more people beyond those two will die as a result. Because of this, Alika is more or less locked away to keep people from being killed. However, Killua does make the argument that their family kills many more people than Alika ever could. The biggest thing we see her do throughout the series is obviously healing Gon after his transformation, and after that she and Killua begin traveling together. Kaluto is the final child of the Zoldix, and most notably, he's seen replacing Hisoka in the Phantom Troop. Kaluto is probably the least well-defined in terms of his own personality among his siblings. He's quiet, obedient, and just kind of always does whatever he's told. Despite this, Kaluto in general has an innate sense of superiority, sometimes leading him to brutally toying with his opponents and extending a fight. However, he's not too proud to realize that he actually might be the one lagging behind. For example, he quickly realizes that he is weaker than many of the other people in the Phantom Troop. While not exactly being the most powerful Nen ability, Kalutos is actually really cool. He's a manipulator who specializes in paper-based abilities. This can be both for surveillance and used offensively. With his Surveillance Paper Dolls ability, he can attach a piece of confetti to someone, and with a paper doll version of that person, he, he can listen in on everything happening around them. And if he needs to attack, he can use Dance of the Serpent's Bite, which basically turns shreds of paper into a tornado which revolves around the enemy and slices them to bits. It's not exactly incredibly powerful, but over time, it will definitely do some damage. The current leader of the Zoldix, and the father of everyone mentioned so far, is Silva Zoldic. While he looks a little bit scary at first, he's pretty calm and restrained as a person. He also seems like he is just generally a good guy for the most part, you know, aside from the whole assassination thing. As a father, he seems to believe that his children need to make steps on their own for their own personal journeys. While he wants Killua to become the next head of the family, and he is sure he eventually will fill that role, 
he still seems to respect that Killua isn't interested in that right now, and is willing to let him travel the world with Gon. This is actually pretty in line with Silva's philosophy for assassination, believing that no assassin should make their move until victory is guaranteed. Speaking of his assassination abilities, he is arguably the best in the world. If not, then he's very close. Killua mentions how he can even take out a man's heart without spilling a drop of blood, and that's when he's trying to be sneaky. If he actually wants to kill and doesn't mind being a bit flashy, he can rely on his Nen. Just like Killua, he's a transmuter, creating massive balls of energy from his aura that can be thrown at his opponents and explode on impact, apparently being strong enough to even kill people like Zeno or Krollo. Zeno is Silva's father and is probably one of the best characters in the series. He's just this quick-witted old man who's insanely powerful despite his age. It's likely that Silva got his philosophy on assassination from Zeno, as the old man is much more of a strategist than a head-on fighter. As is the case for the best of the Zoldix, Zeno has a pretty interesting moral code, only choosing to kill those that he has a contract for killing, and otherwise trying to avoid killing innocent people if possible. For example, we see him losing his will to fight after accidentally injuring the innocent Komugi, choosing to leave the battle with Meruem after ensuring that no other innocents would be hurt. Zeno, just like Silva and Killua, is a transmuter, but where Silva seemed to have also had a knack for enhancer skills, Zeno has instead developed his emitter skills. Most of his abilities see him shaping his aura into attacks, such as aura blasts or creating dragons to ride or attack with. At the end of the day, Zeno is just kind of this stereotypical powerful old anime dude with flashy attacks, but he also has a strong moral compass and his dynamic within the Zoldic family, specifically how he adores Killua and dislikes Miluki, just add a lot of fun in there as well. This dude kind of feels like a grandpa that kids would look up to, and I've just always loved it. Kikyo is Silva's wife, and uh, she's a little bit crazy. Firstly, it's kind of hard to get past her design. The big poofy bustle gown, her huge hat, bandages all over her body, and that cyborg-like visor covering her eyes can be a lot. But when you add in her obsessive doting over Killua and the heavy expectations that she has for him, as well as how she can become suspicious of any friends that he makes because they might ruin his potential, you have the makings of a crazy woman. And that's not even mentioning how violent and cruel she is. Like, yeah, Silva will kill people, but Kikio will use and abuse them and see nothing wrong with it. There isn't really that much that we know about her outside of these obsessions, other than she was actually from Meteor City, much like Krollo and much of the Phantom Troop, and of course, we still don't know her Nen abilities. Now, the last two members we really don't have much information on at all. Maha Zoldik is the oldest member, being over 120 years old. All that we really know about him is that he's an enhancer, that Netero is the only person to fight him and survive, and that he has no connections personally with anyone else in his family. And finally, Zeno is his grandson. Outside of that, he's just kind of this bald old guy doing his own thing. And lastly, we have Zig, who had joined Netero on his journey to the Dark Continent in the past, and that's literally all we know about him. Beyond this, we have a slew of butlers and servants who work for them. People like Canary, Goto, Subone, etc. There's a whole lot of them, but in general they all kind of serve the same purpose, to serve and protect the family as best as they can. However, the most important Zoldic servant definitely has to be Mike, who is just a good boy. And that wraps up this video on the Zoldic family. There are a ton of cool characters in here, and also Miluki and Kikyo. But who are your favorites? For me, it's definitely between Aluka and Zeno. I love Aluka's character so much, and the idea of Faustian wishes is always one of my favorite tropes, but the twist of them affecting the next person rather than the wisher itself is so, so cool. And Zeno is just kind of Zeno, you know? What more do you need? Let me know your own opinions down below, though. And if you enjoy this video and you want to see more Hunter x Hunter content on this channel, be sure to leave a like and comment down below, letting us know which other videos you might want to see. It only takes a second, but it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to Anime Uproar, make this the video that you do so by making sure to click that bell and selecting all notifications. You can also follow Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. I want to give a big thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon who allow videos like this to be possible, especially the patron of Legend, the one who is acknowledged by Lord Twigo himself, Alpha Sigma. As well, are the one-tier patrons, the ones who stand above all clans, Ingrata, Patehefa, Aljital, Hinokami and Water, the Toasted Chi, 
The Spike 8227, Corey McGowan, Dylan Isidore, Spidey Life Tunnel, Tungsten Tarkus, Baked Buddhist, Cody Hebert, and Monkey D. Quilly. Finally, our pro hero tier patrons Gilgamesh, The Red Haired Raven, Anel Cruz, Rathwin De Ora, Very Gucci, Alicia Octor, Bonnie Parks, Joanne Garcia, Ted No Ted, Fat Boy Games, and Soul Rise Slice and Dice. If you enjoy our work, or maybe think we just offer a little bit of extra enjoyment in your day-to-day -day life, please consider going to patreon.com slash animeuproar and supporting the channel. For as little as one dollar, you will get your name featured in future videos, as well as have access to our exclusive patron-only Discord. You can also join the YouTube channel by clicking that blue join button next to the subscribe option, but whichever way you support us, you will get these same great benefits. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, stay excellent.